Hi guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode is all about medical coding career interview questions answered. If you are brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. Recently, as in the last week, I have gotten multiple requests from students ranging from high school age to adults in adult learning trade schools and all asking the same sort of questions about the career field of medical coding. So if you are a high school senior or perhaps you're an adult who's trying to go decide which career field to get into, um, I'm making this episode today. So hopefully these will answer your questions. And these are, are pretty good questions. Um, I do have plenty of videos out though <laughs> where I go into more detail, but I'm going to address these today. If you have any questions, I hope that you'll leave them in the description box below. Maybe I'll do a part two if there are enough questions, uh, but let's go ahead and get started. All right. So first question, how did you become interested in this career? So I didn't even know what a medical coder was <laughs> when I first heard about it. Um, I was unemployed. And when you are unemployed, uh, you have to go to the, I call it the unemployment office. Some people call it the workforce office. And they send you to different, um, different programs, different classes to help you with your resume, sometimes to help you uh, with interview skills and things like that. Well, this particular class was about a program that they had to retrain people. So they would send them back to school and basically all you had to do was get a job in the career field that you were trained in. So I initially wanted to be into accounting because I love numbers, okay? And so I didn't know anything about medical. I have never had an interest in the medical field. Uh, it just wasn't on my radar. I wanted to be an attorney when I was very young. So that was my whole life growing up. <laughs> but of course, uh, life, happens and uh, things change. So because of this, I found myself in my late 20s uh, at the unemployment office and there I was. So they said, well, we have this program and we can train you. Um, and these are some of the career fields that we have to offer. And I saw one for accounting. So I said, okay, great. I'll do the accounting program. Well, when I met with my career advisor, uh, he mentioned medical coding and he said, well, what about medical coding? And I said, oh, no, I don't do anything with needles because <laughs> I was sure anything had to, having to do with medical had everything to do with needles. And he was like, no, you know, this this has everything to do with just reading. Basically, that's all you're doing. And you're translating this information into codes for like insurance company and for statistical purposes. So I was like, hmm, well, I mean, I do like to read. So he said, just go check out the programs and see if it's what you like. If it's not, no, no hard feelings. We'll get you in the accounting program. So I went and I interviewed the schools, the trade schools that were available to me. Um, the program that I went through paid for it completely. And it was through my local workforce office. I do leave the link for that uh, in the description box below. I will leave it. Um, so if you are interested in, in checking out that program, there are plenty of funds. You don't have to be uh, where you have to get into student loan debt if you fall into a category where they have money and funds to help you. But that's another thing. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, it doesn't. This that's the thing about medical coding is that it doesn't take a lot to to start in this, right? I mean. You can study on your own, which is a unique feature of medical coding. You can study on your own. You can completely uh, bypass all of the uh, online programs. You don't even have to go to college and you can still make really good money. Uh, I don't talk about uh, money in specifics on my channel. That is a hard and steadfast rule that I do have on my channel. <laughs> and if you've watched a few of my episodes, you'll know. Uh, the reason that I do that is because when it comes to money, how much do medical coders make? It varies on location and region. Somebody that is working in New York is not going to make the same as somebody living in Texas. Same thing, somebody living in Michigan is not going to make the same as somebody living in Florida because of the location is going to change and fluctuate. Um, and there's also other variables. Is this a public hospital, a private hospital, a government hospital? There are many different variables 
for this. This is why I don't talk about money in specifics because people have different ideas about what is good pay and what is not so good pay. To me, this is excellent pay for uh, not having to have a degree. And there's there's so much to it and there's so much rewarding part of it, parts of it uh, that I think it's it is an excellent field to be in. But I am very biased because I love what I do. So <laughs> as you will see as I continue to answer these questions. Uh, but yeah, that is the answer to number one. I didn't even know what it was. And so that's how I started my journey. Okay. Uh, next question is, what personal characteristics are most important for a medical coding career? Well, you have to be patient. You have to be a patient person. And you have to be able to work independently. And you have to be able to um, converse with people who are highly educated. Now, as somebody <laughs> who does not have a college degree, I don't have a college degree. I have my certification. There is nothing wrong with this, right? Um, because you can be successful in this career field without having to have a, um, a degree. A degree, if you want to get the degree designations, which there's two. Uh, currently, there's the uh, Registered Health Information Technician. That is the associate's degree. Uh, and that is offered with the American Health Information Management Association. Then there's the Registered Health Information Administrator, the RHIA, and that is the bachelor's degree designation that you can sit for once you complete their program. Um, and that is also with the American Health Information Management Association. Now, both of these designations are going to tell employers that you want to be in charge because that's essentially what um, those folks do. They are in charge of people. They are the supervisors. They are the auditors. They are the trainers. Um, the RHIAs are the ones that are in the executive suite. They are the ones running entire departments. And a lot of what they do is not medical coding, but more of the business side of the house. They're the ones who are working on that kind of information in that side of the house. They're not really looking at the day-to-day. -day. Now, the day-to-day -day would be the more, more on the RHIT side, uh, which they are the supervisors. They are the ones that are going to be like the lead auditors and lead coders and things like that, because those people are going to be boots on the ground working directly with the coders and oftentimes working with the providers as well. When you are a medical coder, you have to have a certain level of confidence in yourself and it doesn't matter how new you are. And it, this takes time to build. You have to build these communication skills. And it doesn't matter if you are just a graduating high school senior or if you are in your 40s or 50s or even your 60s. I do have a viewer who graduated high school. He got his certification and within six months he got his first job. He has been at this job for um, just about a year now and he is doing excellently. And he ha already is already starting his career and he's not even 20 yet so I mean that is really amazing I think he's going to do wonderful in his career because he's just already accomplished so much and to be disciplined to, uh, being so young is amazing okay and so it is possible and don't don't let your age be a factor in thinking that you can't do something because yes you can it doesn't matter what your age is and if you are older, I went to a school with a lady uh, who was age 61. She got her certification and she's still working today. And as I said, I've been a medical coder for over 10 years. So <laughs> she's in her 70s now and she's still going. So this career field is open for anybody. So, uh, but yes, that is one of the things that you have to have some of the personal characteristics. You also have to be very persistent, especially in the beginning. You may hear that uh, it is very difficult for medical coders to get jobs in the beginning uh, because they don't have any experience, but you have to be very persistent and you have to apply anyway, because eventually somebody will give you a chance, but you have to put yourself out there in order for them to know who you are. So... That's my answer on that one. Next question, what skills are important to acquire? So again, uh, very good communication skills, verbal and written are very important. When you are writing um, queries, 
Say, for instance, you have to ask the provider for more information or you have to ask for clarification on a diagnosis or a procedure. It has to be written out properly. A provider is not going to want to uh, read or pay attention to somebody who uses abbreviations. Uh, can't you be using LOL? You can't be using U, the letter U, instead of Y-O-U. <laughs> you can't do that, you know. Uh, you have to write things out formally. You have to be able to speak uh, very eloquently. You have to be able to do all of those things. But yes, um, that is very important. Uh, you do have to know your anatomy, physiology, and medical terminology. I say a lot in my videos that we have to know what doctors know while never having gone to medical school. That is our life. <laughs> so it, you will be able to get this knowledge in time. You have to be patient with yourself, but you also have to be putting in the time. You know, that with the study time, that's, that's all I'm going to say. So uh, next question. Uh, what kind of previous employment, volunteer work, or other experiences would employers look for in a medical coding applicant? Obviously, if you can get an externship somewhere or an internship uh, in, a, in a health information department, that would be great. It, that's not always the case, though. You can't always get that. Um, but if you can, if you're working in a medical office anyway, a lot of times they're going to like it if you've had like previous billing experience. Uh, billers often, medical billers often make that transition over to medical coding. And because those are two separate functions, a medical biller deals with the insurance company and the patients and of course the doctor. Uh, but the primary purpose of the coder, the medical coder, is to deal with the doctor and the other ancillary staff because um, they're the ones that are going to be making sure that everything is coded appropriately. Not all places have a medical biller and a separate medical coder. Sometimes they are one person, okay? So it just depends on how big the facility and what's going on in the structure of that hospital or that clinic office. So with that in mind, <laughs> uh, you, you do have to um, make sure that if you are looking for other positions before you begin as a medical coder, try to look for other positions like uh, prior authorizations, which prior authorizations would require you to look through uh, the documentation. And what they do is they make sure that the procedure that the provider wants to perform and the diagnosis um, are, are compatible. And then they ask the insurance company, can this patient have this procedure? Uh, is this going to be covered? So uh, you don't have to be certified for that, but it does help to build that experience. And there's many alternative jobs for brand new medical coders or people who have not been in the field yet. Uh, I do have a video on that and I will leave that in the description box below. So next question. Um, let's see, where are we? Uh, can you tell me about your usual activities or describe a typical day on the job? How long is this video? <laughs> okay, so I typically will start my day by running a report. Uh, what I do is I, for me in my situation, I work for a hospital and I have two assigned whole clinics. I work with the orthopedics and the podiatry department, okay? So I have all of the providers for this section and it comes out to right now about 16 providers all together, right? I have 16 providers. Some range from seeing maybe eight or 10 patients in a day. It fluctuates depending if they're gonna be in the operating room that day or if they have a full schedule. Sometimes if they're working a half schedule for whatever reason, they'll have 10 patients. Other days they will have 20 patients. Some days they will have 22 patients. It just depends on what's happening in their schedule. So I will run a report uh, from the day before that will let me know how many patients these all these providers had. And I will start to work that list and I will start to work it in the queue. I have a queue uh, that has all of the encounters for the entire facility uh, for our section. And it will be in real time. So basically all of the encounters that were completed from the day before will be in this queue. 
and I can start working this queue. And I work as much as I possibly can. I do have a quota that I have to meet at a minimum of 90 per day. Every facility is different. Uh, sometimes the quota is 120 per day, but don't let this scare you. <laughs> uh, this is outpatient coding, okay? Inpatient coding is completely different. They have a different uh, um, quota that they have to meet, but in the outpatient setting, 90 to 100 a day is 120 a day is not unusual. Uh, this is attainable, but you do have to concentrate. Uh, so <laughs> that's that's one of those things. You have to be able to uh, read, pay attention to what you're doing, and that's essentially what how I start my day off. Um, I will answer emails as they come in. If a provider has a question, sometimes they'll knock on my door. I do have my own office. I am very fortunate to have that. Uh, so I do have a lot of increased privacy, which is great uh, because it does help me to concentrate. And uh, but I do get visitors quite often during the day with providers and they will ask me questions, which is fine because I will stop and make time for them. They are my priority. When you are a medical coder, you have to be able to prioritize things. And for me, my providers come first and their general welfare and well-being is under my watch is basically how I look at it. And so I take care of them. I answer their questions. If they need a refreshment, I do keep a bottle of water and <laughs> bottles of water. And I do keep candy at my uh, at my desk because in a basket, I call it a bear trap. Uh, <laughs> I will have to do a whole separate video about the bear trap. Uh, but essentially, you know, when you're trying to attract the bears and bears are very alpha, right? In, in the animal kingdom, uh, bears are very alpha. And so when you think about this, right, how do you attract the bears? How do you get the bears to come to you? you? You put out food, right? So when you're putting out this food, it does get them to come to you. So when they come over and they can sit there and they can talk to me, they can I can answer their questions, it promotes that good conversation. So <laughs> there is that. Not everybody does that. It's something that I do. Uh, I am the only coder at my facility that does it. Uh, but that's okay. My providers are happy. They document very well and we have a very good communication going. Uh, so that is very important. And it's just one of those things. When you are a medical coder, there are many facets to being a medical coder and especially being a very good medical coder. It's not just about reading your guidelines and understanding. It's literally about the details and the little things. How are you communicating? Are you able to make your point clear? Uh, are you able to instruct these providers who have tons of education? Are you able to instruct them in a way that would help them to understand what we are trying to do? <laughs> because a lot of times they'll tell you that, oh, I don't understand what you're saying. You coders are all different. Uh, but if you can explain things to them, they will become more engaged. So uh, that is what I do spend part of my day doing is engaging with my providers. And I enjoy it. And I wouldn't change it for anything. So, <laughs> um, but moving right along. Uh, but that is typically my day. And at the end of my day, I will send a report to my boss, letting her know how many encounters I completed. And if there was any, um, any classes I attended during the day, because we do have to do the continuing education. Uh, and if I have to do that, I take time out of my day and I will note it on my workload report and I will send it to her. And then I start it all over again <laughs> the next day. So that's my day in a nutshell. Um, next question. What are the greatest challenges and rewards of your position? So the greatest challenges is um, not being taken seriously right away and having to work on those and cultivate those relationships with our with my providers. Um, but it's I have gotten so much better with it now. It's not an issue for me, although it is an issue I know for brand new coders and for most coders if they're not uh, being engaged with their providers. So uh, that is a challenge. The rewards, oh my gosh, <laughs> you learn every day. That's a huge reward, especially if you're a nerd like me. Uh, learning is so key to to making me happy. I mean, I love to learn. And so that is the joy that I get out of it. Um, I have met incredible people 
and I have worked with some of the most intelligent people I know I will meet in my whole life. And to me, that's rewarding. Um, I, I have a beautiful place. I have a beautiful car. I've been able to take awesome trips when we were able to travel uh, right now with the pandemic. Of course, that's, you know, on hold. But uh, I, I, I've, I've discovered that this is a passion. This is uh, not even work to me anymore. And if you are lucky enough to feel that way about your profession, then you have everything. And to me, that is the most rewarding. So, Next question. Uh, what professional medical coding organizations should I join and when? If you are a student um, and you're studying medical coding, you can decide between the American Health Information Management Association and the American Academy of Professional Coders. Both of these are the major medical coding associations. If you want to be a medical coder, you have to be certified with one of these associations because these are the associations that the um, employers are looking for. You can join them at any time. You don't even have to have a credential. Um, you, can, you can just join just to join. If you are in an, in an official program, uh, you can get the student rate depending on which association you're going with. But I will leave both links in the description box below so that way you guys can check it out. So next question. What degree or certification is required for an entry level position? Um, what about advancement to a higher position? So the certifications, there's um, quite a few and I do have a video on that. I will leave that in the description box below because that one goes into much more detail uh, than I can get into in this video because this video is, <laughs> is going to be wrapping up pretty soon. Um, but you do not have to have a college degree to be a medical coder and you don't even have to have a degree at all in your career. Uh, a lot of people just have one certification and they've been successful their entire careers. So it's really entirely up to you. Uh, if you are wanting to be advanced to a higher position, then you want to get those degrees. But keep in mind, if you are going to get the RHIT or the RHIA, the, the bachelor's, the RHIA, and the, or the associates, the RHIT, keep in mind that in an employer is going to look at you like you are wanting to be in a supervisory or a managerial type position. So that is something to keep in mind. Uh, next question. What courses do you recommend that I take in high school? Anatomy, physiology, medical terminology, all of your sciences like that. That's what you need. <laughs> that is imperative. It is imperative that you know medical terminology. And it is imperative that you know your anatomy and physiology. Because when you talk about the disease process... That's your pathophysiology, and that is really important when you're looking at medical documentation. And the last question, what is the most important piece of advice you can give to someone going into the medical coding career field? Be patient. Be patient and be persistent. Patient with yourself that you're not going to understand everything right away. Again, we have to know what, doc what, we have to know what doctors know while never having gone to medical school. That's number one. Number two, you have to be persistent because medical coders do have a hard time getting a job, their very first job. Uh, just because you get rejected a few times does not mean that you have to stop. You have to apply everywhere. Your resume needs to look good, regardless of whether you have experience or not. Uh, I do have videos about uh, resume tips, um, but you want to make sure that you're looking at the job posting itself uh, a lot of times it'll tell you exactly what that employer is looking for so you've got to make sure that that is in your resume if you possess any of those skills if you've had your medical terminology anatomy and physiology you got to have it on there if you are um, really good with a computer outlook word excel powerpoint get it on there okay so uh, have a really good cover letter and do not make it just the regular run of the mill nobody wants run of the mill there's a hundred people applying for that position. And if it looks run of the mill, and if it looks copied from a book, next, you need to be yourself and you need to let them know why they should hire you. So that's my advice. I'm gonna wrap this one up. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. If you are interested in the medical coding career field, I hope you'll check out the rest of my videos. I've got so many videos and I do have Q&A Tuesday airing every Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. That is the number one question and answer show about medical coding airing on Tuesday. So all of your questions are answered then as well. So 
If you are a medical coder, a medical coding student, somebody curious about the fascinating world of medical coding, a provider, or a nurse, I invite you to like and subscribe and follow me on my journey in medical coding. I will see y'all next time. Bye.